In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about resistors and Ohm's law. We've used resistors in some of our previous videos in order to illustrate a point or demonstrate use of some of the tools, but now we need to discuss resistors themselves so that we can use them effectively in our circuit designs. This is the symbol we'll use for a resistor. Resistors can typically have some voltage difference, V, across their terminals, and a current, I, entering the positive voltage terminal. Passive circuit elements are described by the relationship between voltage and current at their terminals. For resistors, this relationship is called Ohm's law. Voltage equals current times resistance. In the lab assignments, we'll be mostly interested in the practical aspects of things, so in this video we'll emphasize the measurement of resistance and some good data acquisition and analysis practices. So how can we determine the resistance of a given resistor? Resistors have their resistance encoded on them in some way. For example, the resistors in our parts kit have a series of bands painted on them. These bands provide a code from which you can determine the resistor's resistance. The values printed on the resistor are, however, not entirely accurate. The actual resistance will almost always differ somewhat from the expected value. Therefore, when we're presented with a resistor, it's generally desired to verify its resistance with some measurement. Probably the easiest way to do this is with a digital multimeter. DMMs almost invariably include a resistance measurement function called an ohm meter. It very readily displays the resistance of a resistor to which is connected. It's also possible to apply power to a resistor, measure the resistor's voltage difference, and the current through the resistor, and calculate the resistance from Ohm's law. In this video, we'll talk at least briefly about all of these approaches. We'll spend most of our time, however, on the last option, since it's the most fundamental of the three. First, let's talk a bit about reading the expected resistance value from the resistor itself. Resistors which are physically large enough will often have the resistance value printed directly on the side of the resistor. This is a 6.2 ohm resistor from the analog parts kit. Notice that on this resistor, the maximum power dissipation is also listed. 10 watts. In our parts kit, however, most of the resistors have a color code on them which provides the resistance value. This resistor, for example, is a 1 mega ohm resistor. Please notice that the physical size of the resistor doesn't correlate to the resistance value. The physical size is more closely related to the maximum power that the resistor can dissipate. The 1 mega ohm resistor has a maximum power dissipation of less than half a watt. I want to emphasize something at this point. The resistance value coded on the resistor itself is an expected value, which corresponds approximately to the actual resistance within some tolerance. This value is also sometimes called a nominal value. Nominal means in name only. Engineers, however, sometimes have a tendency to incorrectly use it as a pseudonym for normal. Since the actual and nominal values may be different, you should always verify the resistance value by measuring it in any application which is sensitive to the actual resistance value used. Now let's look at how to read the color code on the resistors. The resistors in our analog parts kit all have a four-band color code. This means that the resistance value and its tolerance are coded in four colored bands on the resistor. The first three bands consist of a resistance value in exponential notation. The fourth band is a tolerance, which tells us the allowable error between the actual and nominal resistance of the resistor. The first three bands are read as follows. The first two bands provide the mantissa of the number. The third band provides the exponent, or power of 10, by which the mantissa is multiplied. The general formula is shown here. Different colors correspond to the digits 0 through 9. Black is 0, brown is 1, red is 2, and so on. A complete table is provided in the text. The fourth band is tolerance. It's a number which provides the maximum error between the expected and nominal resistance of the resistor as a percent of the nominal resistance. A gold band, for example, means that the actual resistance value will be within 5% of the value coded on the resistor itself. The bands on this resistor, for example, are brown, black, and red. The first two bands, brown and black, correspond to 1 and 0, respectively. The mantissa is 10. Red is 2, so the overall resistance is 10 times 10 squared, or 1,000 ohms, or a kiloohm. 
the tolerance band is gold, which corresponds to a 5% tolerance, the resistance of this resistor is guaranteed to be within 5% of the nominal value of one kilo ohm. Now let's talk just a bit about measuring resistance using a DMM. We've already covered this topic in the DMM video, but we should probably at least mention it here since we know a bit more about resistors now. Recall from the DMM video that in order to measure resistance, we set the selector knob on our DMM to the ohm symbol and insert the DMM leads into the COM and volt ohm ports in the DMM. I'll be using leads with alligator clips so that I can hold the resistor with the DMM probes. Let's use our DMM to measure the resistance of the resistors whose color bands we read in our previous example. If you recall, the nominal resistance of this resistor is 20 kilo ohms. When we clip our leads to the terminals of this resistor, we measure a resistance of 20.12 kilo ohms. Since the tolerance band is gold, our measured resistance is well within 5% of the nominal value. One quick note on measuring resistance. If the resistance between the leads is too high for our DMM to measure, as in the case where we have nothing connected between the leads, the DMM will read OL. This stands for overload and simply means that the resistance is higher than the DMM can register. Finally, let's talk about estimating resistance from a measured voltage and current. Ohm's law tells us that voltage is resistance times current. If we rearrange this, we can calculate resistance as the ratio of voltage to current. Therefore, if we measure both the resistor voltage and the current through the resistor, we can estimate the resistance from those measurements. Now, we can measure either voltage or current with our DMM, but we can only measure voltage with our analog discovery. The quick start video on the voltmeter instrument will provide background information on measuring voltage with the analog discovery, by the way. With this choice of tools, therefore, we'll use the DMM to measure the resistor's current, the voltmeter instrument to measure the resistor's voltage, and we'll use the voltage tool on the analog discovery to apply a voltage difference V. This is the circuit we created to estimate resistance. The V plus power supply, the red wire, is used to provide power to the circuit. Our ammeter connects that terminal to one of the terminals of the resistor. The other resistor terminal is connected to ground. We're using the two orange wires, channel one of our voltmeter, to measure the voltage across the resistance. Turning on power on the voltage instrument should provide about 5 volts to the resistor. It's actually providing about 5.02 volts. Checking our current measurement, we're getting 2.31 milliamps through the resistor. If we divide 5 volts by 2.31 milliamps, we get about 2,200. That makes sense. The nominal resistance of this resistor is 2.2 kilo ohms. In our previous example, we acquired only one piece of data from which to estimate a resistance, a single combination of voltage and current. Since errors can always creep in when we're acquiring data, any single data point is subject to an unknown amount of error. If we can acquire more combinations of voltage and current data for the resistor, we can be more certain about our confidence in the resistant estimate. Let's take a look at how this works. Suppose we acquire a set of current data for various values of resistor voltage difference. We can plot this data and determine a best fit straight line to the data using linear regression techniques. The resulting best fit line will have a, a slope, r, which reflects the least overall error among the various data points. This gives us a lot more confidence that our estimate of the resistance doesn't have any severe errors. Even better, we can calculate a correlation coefficient to get a quantification of our degree of confidence in our estimate. We also have the opportunity to identify and discard outlying data points, which we have very low confidence in. The circuit used to perform the above approach is exactly the same as our previous circuit, except that we need to be able to apply different supply voltages. V sub S has to take on different values. Therefore, the only change between our circuits is that we'll use the waveform generator channel to apply the supply voltage rather than V plus. The dependent sources video in this chapter shows how to use the waveform generator to apply a constant but adjustable voltage to a circuit. In summary, in this video we presented a number of ways to determine the resistance of a resistor. Probably the easiest way to determine an approximate resistance is by reading the color code on the resistor. However, always keep in mind that that value will have some error associated with it. 
In order to determine an actual resistance value, we need to measure the resistance. We presented a couple of ways to do this. The easiest way is probably to use the ohmmeter function on a DMM. However, the same information can be determined by measuring the voltage across the resistor and the current through it and calculating a resistance. Even better is to use multiple data points and plot what is called the voltage current characteristic curve. For resistors, this curve is a straight line whose slope is the resistance. Although plotting the voltage current characteristic for a resistor seems overly labor intensive, since the same information can be determined in seconds using an ohmmeter, it's conceptually very important. Many other devices that we will encounter later do not have voltage current characteristics which are as simple as a resistor's. The only way to really characterize the behavior of these devices is to acquire the voltage current data for them and plot the resulting curves. It's a really good idea to get used to this concept in the context of resistors before you encounter the more complex behavior of these other devices.